about different runs all season long, and there was a couple in this game as well, and one one out of half time. Uh, what do you make of that? Yeah, you know, you look at this and you. We scored three points in the first five minutes of the game, three points in the first five minutes of the after half time. Um, you know, good job in our bench coming in and and changing the energy and and doing that. But the, yeah, that group right now, which is again, it was a different group with Tuck coming back into that lineup as well. Um, so yeah, they they they've got to be better. And in, in I don't I didn't think the shot attempts were were horrible. Um, through that period, um, certainly after halftime, I didn't like the way that we came out, and, and it was an area that we've kind of challenged Shay. Um, so coming out of halftime, go as hard as you can for three minutes to bring the energy to the to that group coming out. So yeah, some we got to work on. What I was pleased more about tonight was obviously you know getting Mace back into into rotation, um, the energy that he gave us, the the confidence that that he played with. Um, and then, you know, certainly, you know, Tuck tonight to say, hey, we're down 12 or something like that and he backed himself to, to go ahead and make shots and, um, you know, that got us back in the game and we had some, some reasonable execution uh, to get decent looks on out-of-bounds plays and different things and um, shots that we think would normally fall for us as well. Chippies around the rim that we, we need to finish, but, um, yeah, we're still having those patches where... It gets sticky and, and we don't move it and we don't sh share it enough for, for periods of time and it's certainly something that we came out of the FIBA window saying that that's an area of our offence that has to be consistent and then we haven't got it consistent enough yet. And you mentioned Tuck and it's not the first time he's had a fourth quarter like that and there was times in the first half where it looked like he had an open look at three, didn't want to take it. How do you get the aggressive Tuck that we've seen in the fourth quarter sometimes through the whole game? Yeah, you know, I, really, I worked with him in the fever window just on his shoulder a few times and, um, yeah, you know, after really spending some time with him, it's just like I, was, like I really believe in your shot. And then so, you know, it's got to come from me to for him to have that confidence to go ahead and, and shoot it. And I think at different times we've, um, you know, really put him in situations to be able to cut. And, and he's, I think he's doing that better and he found a a bit of a rhythm with Shea when he penetrates about how he moves off the basketball. and um, So, yeah, if, we, if he can get that balance right with the, the aggressive cuts that he can make and the, and the spacing and the confidence to shoot the three ball, uh, it's going to have to change um, some defences where they've played pretty soft on him and, and clogged the paint. And if he can you know, continually do that, it's going to be great for our offence. Uh, just with the CG incident, it looked scary yeah. in the arena and certainly a surprise that he came back on the floor. I know you're in the game, but have you been able to get any information about how that played out? Yeah, you know, I talked to our medical staff, and um, yeah, CG was never unconscious. He was aware of what was going on when he was lying on the floor the whole time, and um, you know, but it kind of looked like Lockie Barker in Perth for a second, where he just kind of laid there very still. And um, but yeah, it was different. They took him back and settled him down for ten minutes. He passed every test he needed to pass, and. Um, yeah, I was a little surprised when they come back out and said he could could go. But um, yeah, when he spoke to me and he's like, "Yeah, tell, tell me what's been going on in the game," because he'd missed a period of time. How'd we get back into it? And you know, he just wanted to absorb all the information. And um, yeah, Tuck was cooking there, and but he was tired. He called his own his own sub, and so um, yeah, threw CG back in there and and got Tuck his little rest and got him back in. It still seemed like it took a medicos quite a, a while to to attend to him. Right? Were you aware of what, what took him so long? He was like lying there for quite a while. Didn't quite get out to him for a while. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how you saw it. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, he was lying there for a while, and um, so yeah, they they do their job how yeah. they how they see fit. Yep. Yes, yeah, curious. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you, you, you did say that you, obviously you got on a really good run even without him there, but how how costly was it in that period of the game to be without yeah, your captain for the long period? Yeah, it offered the opportunity for others to step up, and we, and we saw that. You know, it could have easily gone the other way with him, him being out. That we we didn't make a run back, and so um, yeah, that was a pleasing part of that. That you know, if he's going to have an off night or out of the game for for a period of time, that the group has a belief that they can continue to score without him. So yeah, that was the positive part. I guess obviously a massive week with, with Isaac and all that sort of thing and how, how did you sort of, I guess, see, I mean, early on it seemed like you guys were a little bit flat. Do you reckon that may have played 
because that's such an emotional build up I guess did that do you reckon that may play a part in it or? yeah I'm not sure you know it wasn't the obviously the ideal preparation of what we were hoping for in the in the fever window um, you know most of the coaching staff missed practices with with COVID and I think we all had COVID at some period through uh, this and number of players with COVID as well so I'm sure other teams were were affected um, yeah it wasn't a, an emotional week but a you know a great week um, we felt like our culture as a club um, you know was um, you know grew in the diversity and uh, acceptance of um, of everybody and Isaac in, in, in what you know he went through and the courage he had to do that. So, but we really wanted to come out and um, you know make a have be physical tonight and be be tough and 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 play um, you know differently to what we saw in the first five minutes. So that that part was a disappointment to um, you know say how we we're going to play and we and we didn't do it until we saw some energy come off the bench and sh showed us the way. What, what did you make of Isaac's performance? Did he sort of seem like a bit freer out there, like a bit of a clearer mind after such a big week for himself? Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, he's probably got some, you know, when he goes four of ten, he probably hasn't shot the basketball the way he wants to shoot it. And so, you know, there's probably three or four chippies around the rim that um, we, we'd expect him to, to, to go, and, go and knock in as well. Um, yeah, had a couple of free throws that he missed as well. So, yeah, just his touch was probably lacking a little bit tonight. Yeah, really, really good. I think it's been a long time coming for me and, um, you know, getting out on the floor, representing our club, all the people that have supported me throughout this entire process, it meant a lot for me to sort of give back to them. You know, they've put a lot of time and effort into me in the last few months and um, I just want to be really appreciative, not only for me to step out on the floor, but just share the day with all those people as well. Sure. Um, just little things that I think I bring to the table that watching the, the first 10 games that I think I can add to. Um, nothing specifically magical, just running hard, setting good screens, boxing out, doing the little things that over the course of a long game contribute to winning. Um, I did them OK. I still think I've got a lot of room to grow. Um, first game back and how to be out there, but no, still a lot of room for improvement for sure. Indeed. With Mace back in the lineup and then Marcus coming in on Saturday, all of a sudden, Yeah, obviously, we, you know, we had Newley playing, you know, some power forward there uh, for a period of time where he's required to do that. We move him back um, to a guard spot now, and um, you know, we have five bigs that you know we haven't had um, for a long time. So, um, you know, we have two legit centers that you know are six ten and both can protect the rim. Uh, it's a little different playing against Adelaide, where their you know their bigs can try and really stretch you out and. And different things tonight. So, um, but yeah, and then we've got Mace and Barlow that both swing between four and five, and and Sav. So yeah, I think we've got a really really good mix of bigs, and um, you know they're gonna, they're all going to all fight for minutes, and um, you know we're going to back people that are, that are playing well in the fourth quarter and play them. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, obviously it's a it's a game where. Having an extra six ten guy um, against what they have can can really help us. We, you know, we saw what Big Source was able to do, you know, last time, and so um, if we can restrict him a little bit more with some with some length and and size, that'd be great. How do you sort of see this this time of year? You've slipped below five hundred. You're out of the top six. Another big Melbourne derby. Um, how, how do you sort of view this upcoming match? Yeah, you know, every time so far this year where. Um, you know, we've dropped one and had a big game coming up. We've we've turned up, and so um, that's what I expect from our group again. That um, at home, even though it not being our home game, um, you know that this group will turn up and, and go ahead and, and get the win. I think mean, every game is important, obviously. But I mean, do you sort of guess since this is probably more a bit more important than most that you played so far this season? No, we don't. <laughs> we just keep weighting games too heavily right now. You know, we know. 
Um, it's going to be a period of time before we before we get Shay back. We know it's going to be a little adjustment to having Marcus come into our group. Um, you know, obviously, Lockie Barker contributed well as 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 a backup point guard tonight, and so he needs to continue to grow in that role. Um, yeah, so it's, there's still going to be some adjustment periods as this group learns how to grow together. Is there a time frame on Shay? Are you sure? Are you aware about how long he might be out for? Yeah, I really don't know. And, you know, the medical staff are doing a great job and um, we just, you know, there's there's some symptoms there and we just need to, to work to, to get rid of them and however long that takes, it, it takes. And, um, you know, we just, we have to be, there's been a couple of concussions and so we have to be super cautious with him and, um, you know, we'd hate to see him, you know, shut down for, for the season. So, um, you know, we'll do our do our best to um, go go slowly and make sure he's a hundred percent to come back and, and, and ready to play. How's he holding up? I'm sure he must be really frustrated to sort of get the taste and then sort of have to see out again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely a frustration and you know, we really sat down with him and his wife and talked about everything this week about, you know, the plan and, and where we want to go and, and how we support him as a club right now because we know um, you know he's a guy that doesn't even like warm ups, he just wants to play. And for him to sit out and, and not have that right now it's um, you know he was a little flat about it, obviously, and so um, you know how we can keep him involved in practice, in what he can do for us, in five on zeros and no contact and things, and just make him continue to really feel a part of the group through this period. Just basically, just from a place perspective, Isaac's announcement. What, what do you think about what you think for, I guess, players going forward um, in the future? His announcement. Yeah, I think he's done a, a really brave thing, and and being the one of the first active guys in the in the world, and so we really it was. Really amazing thing just to be in the room, to be a part of that. It'd be a very, very, very small part of that. Um, but yeah, we'll embrace him, and you know, hopefully one day no one will really care who what happens because you know, I, for me, nothing's going to change. We treat Isaac just he's just the same, and he's part of our club. We'll embrace him just the same, and yeah, looking forward to what what comes as a result of it. Cheers.